You know, it was really a remarkable session for the market, which saw all your major indices open under immense pressure, only to sort of find that footing and then make that nice rebound. Now, of course, there's no doubt Apple, which hit $1 trillion in market cap, played a major role in whipping up general enthusiasm. Uh, and then there was the $5 billion apology from Elon Musk that helped propel Tesla to an amazing session and in the process crushed the naysayers and the shorts. I love it when that happens. That one-two punch helped the tech sector outperform. And NASDAQ 100, now it's accelerating. It, remember, it just came off key support. In fact, it was a couple days ago. It had to hold above its 50-day moving average. Now we can actually see it test its all-time high in the next few sessions. Now, there's so many lessons for investors from Apple reaching this $1 trillion milestone. First of all, I would say, you know, stop. Please stop guessing about the market or individual stock tops. You don't know where the top is. Apple's market cap was $5 billion in 2000. So think about this. The value is up 199 times. I want you to think about that for a moment. If this stock was in your account or your retirement account, it would change your economic trajectory, not just for yourself, but for generations of your family to come. Share price isn't value. Right now, Apple shares, in fact, are changing hands at a Ford P.E. ratio of 15.3. That's less than the average S&P 500 component. Management, by the way, has bought back $43 billion of this stock in the last couple of years. I actually think it's a smart investment for them. Growth versus value. In fact, they bought that this year. The growth versus value, though, this is the battle we've been having. Uh, and, and I say, you know what, uh, great growth versus value debate, forget about it. I know it's out now because technology has made this huge snapback, but don't try to pin those two against each other. I continue to believe investors should actually be aiming for balanced portfolios, which includes growth and value. In fact, the second best performing se sector today, consumer staples. Even though many of those names have already shown the inability to pass their higher costs onto consumers, still a lot of bad news baked into these names, and, and that's why there's a lot of buying, because I think there's going to be a lot of consolidation. And for the record, I think J.M. Smuckers is probably the cheapest name in the sector. But let's talk about the buy signal. With all of the hoopla over Apple, all the hoopla over Tesla, and other things in this market, I think the biggest buy signal was also the most benign the Dow Jones Industrial Average, down more than 200 points, way down by these big names with exposure to China, yet a stage a very convincing rally. Sure, it closed down, but I tell you what, I guarantee you, people buying this dip today, they weren't small investors taking a shot. It was smart money getting in ahead of, uh, getting in ahead of the crowds. So for the Dow, your next test begins at 25,527. A close above 25,710 is the ultimate buy signal. By the way, the China situation, I found it intriguing. The 16 companies with the largest revenue exposure to China, only five of them were really down today, and that includes win of Las Vegas Sands. Now, the latter said that their earnings miss had nothing to do with tariffs or Trump's hard line on China. By the way, the CEO is being interviewed by a reporter who wanted to force him to say that. He never did. Meanwhile, in addition to Apple and Tesla, other stocks with big China revenue exposure that surged today, Perkin Elmer and Lear Corp. After the close, CBS posted better than expected earnings uh, and revenue. Uh, and of course, the company's earnings call, everyone was listening. The head of investor relations said that the CEO, Les Moonves, would not, he would not address the controversies surrounding him and the company. Several women tell The New Yorker that Moonves allegedly sexually harassed him and he assaulted them back. Some of it goes back decades. The company has hired outside counsel to investigate. Meanwhile, Moonves continues to deny the allegations.